Uh, hello, so my name is Nemanja and uh, I will present uh, joint work with uh, Mihailo Grbović, Vladana Dosadjevic, Naran Bamidipati and Anand uh, Nagarajan and we are from the uh, targeted team at uh, Yahoo Labs. In this talk we will uh, see how we enable the targeting at Tumblr and this is the overview of the talk. First we will see some of the Tumblr basics, what is Tumblr and how, how was advertising on Tumblr performed bef before. Then we'll see uh, which data that we use and that actually you can also use uh, and from which we generated Tumblr user profiles. And finally, we will see how these user profiles were, were used to uh, enable gender and interest prediction. So Tumblr is basically a microblogging service where users can uh, maintain their own blog. They can generate content and follow other people's blogs. And currently there are 249 million blogs uh, in, and 117 billion posts. On a daily basis, this number is increased by 90 million, and it exists in uh, 16 languages. Uh, and on top of that, Tumblr is currently one of the fastest growing networks of all the other social platforms, as you can see in the, in the, on the slide. On Tumblr, user can have uh, one or, or several blogs. Uh, however, usually, usually majority of people, of Tumblr users have only one, which we call primary blog. And for the purposes of this uh, work, we'll assume that one user is equal to one blog. Because there's so many, so, very, uh, so few people with uh, more than one. And here you can see some examples of, of uh, blogs. Each blog has a title and description. And uh, in many cases, uh, users uh, have some team for their uh, blog. So if they're interested in sports or fashion, then they mostly write about that. Uh, and uh, these are some examples of, of blog descriptions. As you can see, they're, they're quite informative. Uh, oftentimes, uh, users uh, specify their name, their age, sometimes their location, and also what they're interested in. And uh, we will see that this information is, uh, is, of course, very valuable to us, and we will use this information to, to develop our uh, targeting, uh, targeting system. Uh, so one main uh, action that uh, blog owners or Tumblr users can perform is to create posts, of course. And they can also reblog other, other users' blog, uh, posts if they like, if they like them. And uh, once they reblog or post uh, or uh, publish a post, they, uh, they uh, appear on their uh, main page. We will, we'll see how that looks like. Uh, for the post types, uh, users can choose between text, photo, quote, link, and so on. Uh, however, more than 92% of, uh, of uh, posts are text and photo. So the main page at Tumblr is called the dashboard. Here you can see an example of Mihailo's uh, dashboard. Mihailo is uh, the first author of this work. Uh, where uh, if, if he followed some users, then when these users publish a post, these posts also appear on his dashboard. Uh, and all these uh, posts on, on, on one's uh, dashboard are ordered by the, by the time of creation. So they're ordered chronologically. On Tumblr, uh, advertising is done through sponsored posts. And here you can see how regular and sponsored one uh, look like. For regular post, we have a title, we have body, we have tags, and these tags are not automatically generated. They are generated by the, by the users themselves. And also we can, uh, here you can see two buttons down there. Uh, users can reblog uh, post, in which case it appears on their, on their dashboard, and they can like it. Sponsored post is very much like a regular one, only that uh, we have a small dollar sign that, uh, that uh, indicates to the user that this is not user content, this is actually uh, sponsor content. And uh, due to the nature of Tumblr, uh, where, where users uh, run their blogs and they very often uh, discuss their interests and they're very explicit about it, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, Tumblr is very useful, it has great value for, for advertisers, of course. Uh, for that reason, eight of ten uh, most valuable uh, global brands are on Tumblr. And until uh, today, there have been more than three billion uh, uh, paid ad impressions. Uh, the value of Tumblr is even, is even uh, uh, larger if you, if you notice that uh, the average user spends uh, around 18 minutes on average per visit. 
and 400 million hours per, per month are spent on Tumblr, which is more than the top 10 prime time TV shows combined. You can see that this, we have, uh, we have really, this is a very valuable asset from the, from the advertising standpoint. Uh, so, the topic of this work is, uh, is advertising on Tumblr. Before we started uh, working on this project, uh, Tumblr lacked uh, two very important uh, advertising, uh, advertising approaches. It lacked gender targeting, where we want to, uh, where, we, where we, for each user we find what's their gender, male, female, and then uh, target them according to that information, and as well as interest targeting where we classify users into different uh, interest categories, more, for example, sports or, or fashion, and then uh, we, we run uh, targeted campaigns. So these two targeting uh, approaches are uh, the topic of, of uh, this work. For the Tumblr data sources, we use something called Firehose, which contains uh, all the user actions and post details. User actions for in, this, uh, in Firehose data source contain uh, posts, reblogs, likes, follows, and uh, for all the posts it, contain, uh, it contains um, captions, tags, titles, artists in the case uh, of audio posts, and of course for the entire blog it, it has uh, titles and descriptions. Now this is, this is of course really amazing data, it's very valuable, and we're giving it for free for you, for you guys. If you can download it for, uh, from this link here, so you might uh, test it out and see if it's, uh, if it's of any use to you. From the Firehose, we also extracted a follower graph, which contains, in our, for, for data that we worked on, 96 million nodes, or users, 5 billion edges, or follows, and on, we found that on average user follows 59 blogs, and uh, also uh, Tumblr is in, on Tumblr, the follows are unidirectional, so if, if I follow you, you don't have to be follow me. Uh, but we found that, for example, there are 18, 18 million pairs of blogs that follow each other. Just some random facts about the, the Tumblr follower graph. graph. Okay, so now we, now we know uh, which data source that we use. Uh, the next step was to create user profiles that would be useful for us for the for the use case that uh, we've been working with that uh, we're dealing with. From uh, from uh, Firehose, we generated user user uh, profiles, and uh, we had for each user declared features, content features, user actions. Declared features uh, for in order to generate the declared features, we used text from blog title and blog, de blog description. From content features, we used tags and the text from blog post content and the artist names from audio posts. And for, for user actions, we use likes, follows, and reblogs. Now, for these text features from blog title and description, we uh, extracted unigrams, and we also extracted uh, bigrams, where we only kept bigrams that, uh, that had a, a large enough score, which is given here. So we see how many times two neighboring words appear together, divided by number of uh, count, count for the uh, separate uh, individually these words and then if score is high enough we we keep uh, this bigram so these were our text features unigrams and selected bigrams now once we have all these features we represent the user as a bag of words uh, and uh, now if user for example had the three posts with hashtag adidas, then, uh, then a value of a uh, feature that corresponds to hashtag adidas would be, of course, three. So this is, these are now our user profiles that, uh, that we've been working with. Uh, so let's see how we did the gender prediction. Uh, here, of course, the goal is to assign gender to each Tumblr user, and given this information, we can run uh, effective uh, targeting campaigns. How we did this, we used the golden set of users with known gender and the user profiles that we just saw how, how were generated and trained the logistic regression model. Then we scored all users and then we applied the threshold so that we only keep those users with high enough threshold. Now the problem here is, of course is that we don't have a golden set and uh, here's how the golden set was generated. We needed the labels for some of the, some of the users. Now, if you remember, uh, blog, um, um, blog description has very useful information. Uh, oftentimes, it has the name of a, of a user. 
And uh, we sat down and manually uh, wrote some, uh, some patterns, some rules that we, which we extracted from the data. So for, for example, we were looking for my name is, mi nombre es, the names, and so on. So, uh, and then we simply matched these, these rules, these patterns to, uh, to the data in Firehose, and that way we extracted uh, names. And you can see how many names we extracted. My name is, had 780,000 uh, occurrences. So now we have a name, but how to, how to assign a label to this name? Well, we used US Census data from years 1880 to 2013. This data has for, for each year, it has um, how many babies were born with certain name and, were, and if they were male or female. So then for example, name John, we we'll go back to the US Census data, count how many male babies were born with name John, divided by total number of babies that were named John, and we use this as our soft label for, uh, for training a classifier. And finally, we, we, we ended up with 400K male users and uh, 560K female users. So now we have both uh, profiles and labels and can easily uh, train a classifier. We set a, we set a threshold for on the score so that we have a precision of around 0 0.8, which ended up in recall for females 0 0.84, for males 0 0.7. And we also performed additional editorial evaluation of, of uh, these results. We picked a thousand blogs on random and uh, we gave it to the editors. And then we asked editors to label these, uh, these um, uh, predictions as correct, wrong, or don't know. Now if we compare correct and wrong, we can see that uh, our accuracy is really high. But we can also see that uh, don't, there are a large number of don't knows. And this uh, simply says that even for human editors, it's, very, it's not really easy, it's not an easy task to, to assign labels to, to blogs and simply uh, uh, shows the value of, of, uh, of this work, of automatically uh, assigning labels. Now, once we uh, classified all the users, we found that for these classified users, uh, they cover more than 95% of all actions on Tumblr, uh, posts, reblogs, and likes. So, um, this, um, so this gives a large amount of traffic on Tumblr that, that's, uh, that we can, which we can target. Let's go quickly to interest prediction. Here's the task is to assign categories, interest categories to users. For example, user X is interested in fashion. Again, we can run nice campaigns if we have this information. And interest, we took interest from the IAB taxonomy. Again, the main challenge here is that we don't really have uh, labeled examples. And we'll see how we, how we uh, solve this problem. This is just an example of categories. So it's two level, two level taxonomy where we have, for example, arts and entertainment movies and food and drinks dining out. Uh, the approach, because we don't have a ground truth, the approach we took was the following. We first categorized all the features from uh, post content for post text and post text and blog titles and descriptions into this category. We'll see how we categorize them. Now, once we have the categories and we have uh, user profiles, for each user i uh, at time stamp t and some category k, we compute the score for a category. It, it looks like this. Um, okay. Uh, basically, we, for each, for each uh, feature, for each action that user performed, we take a look if it belongs to a certain category k. If it does, then we increase the score for this category. And we increase it by the value, it's w feet, it's a, the value of this feature, which we down downgrade if it happened long time in the past. So alpha in this case is a number between zero and one, less than one. So this is how we get uh, scores for each category and for each user. Uh, in this way we, we obtain uh, scores for uh, users who, who post content, but a large number of users don't really post anything, they just follow other people. In this case we leverage the follower graph. So some of the users that have high score, we, we call them influencers. And then uh, in the first round of, of categorizing, we, we don't, don't use follow graph. But then in the second round, we find um, uh, those influencers. And if some users who don't really post a lot follow these influencers, then we assign them these categories. So more details are in the paper if you're interested. But how to categorize uh, events? We use something that we refer to as semi-supervised word to vec so that's the original VertoVec on the left side, on the right side is the semi-supervised version, where we manually categorized 800, around 8,000 tags, for example, as seeds. And now when we train our VertoVec, we simply impute 
we simply add into the, into the sentences these categories. And then when we learn where to act, we also get a vector for each category. And uh, once we get a vector for each category, we can, we can uh, retrieve all the nearest words or, t or tags or any feature to these categories. For, so for example, for category weight loss, we have, weight, we have a vector for this category. We retrieve nearest tags and we get uh, skinny weight loss and all the, others, all the other tags that, that uh, indicate uh, weight loss, that the user is interested in weight loss. Uh, same with desserts. We have a chocolate, uh, ice cream, cupcakes, and so on. So once we once we uh, learn these vectors, then we keep only then all the all those uh, tags that are, have a high enough score. In this case, we, I think we use the uh, similarity score of 0 0.7 as threshold. They get classified in a, in this category, and then we can now again calculate scores for each user. This is an example how it uh, looks like for user one. Uh, we, we see a user's profile. We, uh, we can see that it has uh, it's, uh, posted tags with, uh, with posts with tag spoilers, tag Shrek, tag Hercules 12 times. And then because we, or some of these are categorized into, into some of, in this uh, taxonomy, we, can, uh, we have a high score for arts and entertainment movies. And same for user three, for example, food and drinks. It has food tag, uh, meals tag, dessert tag, and then we can see that it's, uh, it belongs to this category. We ran some uh, uh, live tests with eight advertisers. We ran in parallel targeted and untargeted campaigns, uh, and we, ob we observed uh, on average 20% lifting engagement with the sponsored posts, sponsored posts which uh, includes likes, reblogs, and follows. And here are some of the, for example, for advertisers that operate in uh, sports outdoor, we, ob we observed, for example, 20% uh, lifting engagement. And the final sanity check for our system, that we took Mihailo's blog, which is, again, uh, the first author of this work, and we, uh, we, we want to see where, where Mihailo is uh, categorized and what's his gender. So our, method, our system said that uh, Mihailo is a male, which I believe is true, and uh, interest, uh, he was uh, categorized as interested in sports, photography, science, and we can also explain these, uh, why, we, why we categorize Mihailo in these categories. He follows a lot of soccer. Uh, he mentions photography. He blogs Yahoo Labs blogs, which, are, which were uh, classified as science. Now these, uh, these systems uh, were, uh, now you, advertisers can, uh, can run uh, campaigns on Tumblr with, with gender and uh, interest, uh, the gender interest targeted, targeted and you can uh, book them on Yahoo Gemini ad platform. And since the launch, now the majority of Tumblr advertisers actually use these, the, our system that we just uh, discussed. And that would be it. Thank you very much. Okay, now we have a few minutes for some questions. Uh, thank you for the interesting talk. I wonder when you predict and use the user gender or interest, do you use it together with the proper score, or you say just say this user is a male and target is a male? Or do you say it's 90% of chance or 50% chance uh, to use we, we set the threshold, and then if it's above threshold, we say binary, it's a male or female. What about the interest? How do you for define interest, the we threshold? Do, we, have a, we, uh, we have the scores, right? And then depending on the, on the advertiser. They, the advertiser may request thousand users or a million users, we rank the users by the score and then we can, we can uh, find where, where to cut. Thank you. Uh, for inference of the user interests, uh, different type of actions, are they equivalent or you have some more noisy signals uh, from the... We, we, we took them as equivalent. We, we didn't weigh them differently. If they're classified and there's enough number of, of occurrences, we use them all the same. Okay, uh, please join me again to thank uh, Namanja for his excellent talk. Thank you.